am i clear no problem into this right and this secondary platelet plug is now strongly sealing the plugging the bleeding point so there is some degree of vasoconstriction right now again let's go back what has happened first injured endothelium is injured injured endothelium which was previously healthy and when it was healthy when endothelium was healthy it was antithrombotic and anticoagulant an antiplatelet tissue as soon as endothelium get injured it become procoagulant and it become pro platelet aggregator when endothelium is injured it start producing which factor yes please von willebrand factor von willebrand factor help the platelet to stick to the non platelet surface that is platelet adhesion adherent platelet undergo release reaction which granules alpha and delta, delta. and granule products bring more platelet there and bring more vasoconstriction when more platelet come there and stick to the previously adherent platelet this is called platelet aggregation, aggregation. so there is platelet adhesion then platelet aggregation sorry platelet adhesion release reaction aggregation release reaction aggregation release reaction many times and we end up with what primary, primary platelet primary. plug or primary hemostatic plug then what happen intrinsic and extrinsic pathway of coagulation are activated to so that fibrin should be deposited on this plug and this primary plug could be converted into more yielding strong secondary plug for this purpose intrinsic pathways coagulation is activated as well as extrinsic is activated for intrinsic pathway what is required simply factor number 12 should come in touch with injured endothelium or activated endothelium or activated platelets or subendothelial surface once factor number 12 become activated activated factor number 12 activate factor number 11 11 activate factor number 9 and 9 in the presence of phospholipid factor number 8 and calcium. calcium right this will lead to activation of factor number 10 and factor number 10 in the presence of again phospholipids and calcium and factor number 5 it will convert prothrombin into thrombin and thrombin is the real master that number 1 it will convert fibrinogen into fibrin monomers and number 2 thrombin will activate factor number 13 which will cross link these monomers and produce a meshwork of fibrin within and on the surface of this platelet plug and now this platelet plug is converted into secondary platelet, secondary platelet plug is it right now if secondary platelet plug is quite big and it is present within the circulation we call it also thrombus what do you call it thrombus is it right and if same plug is outside the cardiovascular system it is called clot technically speaking when platelet with coagulation right over it and of course when coagulation network is depositing sometimes even some rbcs are trapped and neutrophils are even trapped you know as you get trapped and duly in some situations same happen ideally there should be platelets and their network of fibrin but sometimes some platelets get stuck of course platelets should be there some rbcs get stuck into this and some neutrophils get stuck into this whole this mass is called thrombus right so this is a semi solid mass which is derived from the constriction of the blood to plug the puncture point in cardiovascular system was that clear to everyone yes please when you get the factor like say 12 and it activates 11 does the the factor 12 get deactivated or okay he really want to know there in, in, no no i understand uh, dr suhil want to know the, know the intimate affairs between this coagulation factors how do they activate each other uh, if you want i can make a bed here and explain that yes let me make it look i will just uh, explain one step and remaining you have to understand the most important step to understand here is how the factor 9 number 9 activate the 10 and how the factor number 10 activate the prothrombin this is the most uh, juicy thing in whole this game right now look this is sofa what is this sofa this is lot of phospholipid made sofa so what is this platelet surface what is this platelet surface and on the platelet surface 
Mm, first of all, we have to talk about activated factor 9. Is that right? So activated factor 9 come there. Uh, I will make activated factor number 9 like this. Sitting over here. Now it is about to activate whom? Factor number 10. So here is factor number 10. Not very happy and not very interested to be activated, but somehow happened to be there. Factor number 10. Now there are important thing. This is one coagulation factor, this is other coagulation factor. First coagulation factor has to activate the second one. Chances are there may be this runaway. Chances. So nature has been very good. First, decently put on the, let them sit in a romantic way on what? Phospholipid membrane. It has to be there for this activation process. Right? That is why we say there should be phospholipid, phospholipid. This phospholipid membrane is the surface provided by the platelets. Platelet membrane is phospholipid. So this, they are sitting on the platelet. Factor number 9 and factor number 10. Secondly, don't let them run away. So, what should we do? We should make very special type of, what is this? Oh my God, it's very bad. Yeah? What is this? Calcium. Calcium is interacting between the phospholipid and coagulation factor and some calcium is interacting between them. This is the calcium which holds everything together and stabilizes the complex. Is that right? No problem up to this. Now which factor is already stimulated? Factor number 9. Look at it. Very naughty. <laughs> factor number 9. Right? And it want to activate factor number 10. And under these circumstances, you may need third party which enhance their affairs. Is that right? And third party here is, yes, who is hiding here and helping them to do their work. Right? Very, very silently. Right? But keep, keeping them together. What is this? Factor number eight. This romantic business is done more effectively in the presence of factor number eight. So on the surface of phospholipids, Calcium holds the inactive and activated products uh, coagulation factors tightly to each other as well as on the phospholipid and then cofactor like factor number 8 will come over there and then now this action. What is this? Factor number 9. Right? <laughs> it is trying to stimulate. Is that right? Now factor number 10 will become activated. Now what it will do? Yes, who will tell me? What factor number 10 will do? It is activated. It wants to activate someone else. Right? It's like love affair. You want to love someone and he wants to love someone else. Right? Exactly like this. 9 is trying to activate the factor number 10 and 10 is trying to activate now factor number 2, which is prothrombin. I mean, it's just like so much romantic that 10 will arrange another fast sofa. Right? And on this, this still which membrane? Phospholipid and this was factor number? This was factor number? Yes, 9. And this was factor number? 10. Right? Now factor number 10 is activated. Right? Too much excited. Factor number 10. When it gets activated, now it is interested in activating prothrombin. Now let us look at the prothrombin. I never knew you got excited with the diagrams. <laughs>